Introduction to the Literary Movements of American Literature from the book Writing the Nation. Emily Dickinson and Walt Whitman, the authors whose work appears in this chapter, are unlikely protagonists or leading characters for a literary movement. Each was an outsider. Dickinson, an unmarried woman who lived a life of quiet seclusion in western Massachusetts, and Whitman, a vagabond who lived a life in search of a community. Dickinson and Whitman promoted a spirit of exploration and inventiveness that matched the geographical, industrial, political, and social growth of the United States. From their works, we gain not so much a literary re renaissance, we do as we do a sense of artistic innovation that developed alongside these other areas of American life and commerce. As literary historians like William Charvet have noted, the development of American literary tradition owes much to the development of the American publishing industry in the middle decades of the 19th century as it does to the prominence of individual authors like Catherine Maria Sedgwick, Washington Irving, Nathaniel Hawthorne, Edgar Allan Poe, Herman Melville, Ralph Waldo Emerson, Henry David Thoreau, and Harriet Beecher Stowe. Sales of these authors' works were dwarfed by the sales of pirated editions of novels by British authors like Walter Scott and Charles Dickens. Nonetheless, the success of these British imports convinced American publishers that the American market was sufficiently robust to demand new works. This demand created an opportunity for American writers to expand their audience and a flourishing literary culture appeared. American authors still faced steep odds in seeing their works into print and, Amer and the American literary publishing did not flourish until the completion of the first transcontinental railroad in 1869, which allowed the reliably consistent shipment of individuals and goods across the country. Additional technological improvements, including the widespread adoption of steam-powered machinery and gas-fueled lights, also provided the necessary conditions for the rapid production of print material and the means by which these materials could be enjoyed at the conclusion of a day of laboring. Thus, only when the Industrial Revolution, or age, ex expanded, then the leisure of Americans also expanded. The first attempts to define the literary culture of the mid-19th century began in the 1930s and 40s, as the United States took on a larger role in global politics and the need for definition gained sharper focus with the publication of O. Matheson's The American Renaissance in 1941. Matheson argued that writers like Hawthorne, Melville, Emerson, and Thoreau represented the expansion of a uniquely American style of writing that interacted with and embraced the North American landscape in new ways. What Matheson called a renaissance was less of a cultural flourishing than the limited success of a few male authors from New England. Despite the real impact of Matheson's work in recognizing the presence of significant male American writers, his catalog still neglected the writing of the writing of African Americans and Native Americans whose work would not be widely recognized until the 1970s. In order to describe the works of these male authors, Matheson um, described uh, how these authors wrote under the title of Romanticism. Romanticism is a literary movement emphasizing the freedom and originality of self-expression that began in Europe at the end of the 18th century and also seemed to capture the spirit of 19th century America and was frequently applied to authors of both prose and poetry. In the hands of these authors, the meadows of western Massachusetts replaced the Lake District as the source of inspiration and the rejection of Puritan morality 
continued the American emphasis on freedom of expression. When Walt Whitman and Emily Dickinson began writing poetry in the 1850s, the thriving abolitionist movement added urgency to the need for new voices and rapid change. When we refer to Walt Whitman and Emily Dickinson as late romantics, we place them at the end of a period that began in the 1820s, and we suggest that their works are merely de derivative from those that preceded them chronologically. Yet Whitman and Dickinson's poetry is contemporary with these other works, and it seems more fruitful to consider di the differences in genre than in the differences in chronology. Whitman and Dickinson achieved, fair fa achieved their fame by changing American poetry from patriotic and historic ballads to free verse. Free verse is poetry that lacks both rhyme and reg regular meter and musically inspired celebrations of the individual in the American landscape. Walt Whitman and Emily Dickinson are the most famous of the late Romantics, and their work inspired successive generations of American authors. From these poets, Mark Twain, Stephen Crane, Charlie Chessman found the freedom to use a variety of American dialects in their work. The realists of the late 19th and early 20th century discovered the richness of the American landscape, and the modernist poets located a source of new poetical for forms to meet the needs of the adolescent republic that came of age in the decades immediately following the Civil War. The national coming of age in the years of Reconstruction, Western expansion, manifest destiny, industrial might, and rapid Im immigration also marks the traditional beginning of literature classes like this one. The Civil War, while not a precise dividing line, is regarded as the most reliable current method for marking the split between the first and second half of the literary history of the United States. So basically what they're saying is that most literature classes um, split the literature history of American literature at eight, in 1860, in other words, at about the time of the Civil War. So anything before the Civil War was Romanticism, and anything after the Civil War was Naturalism and Realism, and then Modernism. In other words, for America, every major war meant that the literary movement of that time period would change. And so before the Civil War, it was Romanticism. And so this first chapter, Late Romanticism from 1855 to 1870, deals with the first half of American literature, where uh, literature was based on emotions, beauty of nature, and talking about yourself, and individual self-expression. And in the areas of poetry, you don't have to have rhymes anymore, so that's called free verse. You don't have to follow a certain form. And so, in other words, it's more about how you want to write your poem, how you want to write your story. So more of a freedom of expression in Romanticism. So um, that's, I think that's it for this chapter. Yeah. So I just wanted to do the introduction, which talks about how the very first literary movement in the United States is Romanticism. So if you have any questions, you can always email me.